I would really hate to um, be like on the DMZ if oh North God. Korea decided to kick it off. It's no. like waves of North Korean troops just storming across. The- they, well, that, that's not even the problem. Either, like- it wouldn't even be the troops because if it was the troops, we could hold them. We got just as many people on the border. Mm-hmm. It's their artillery. Yeah, yeah, they have they have so many artillery ways. pieces like dialed in on the DMZ. Like Seoul is in artillery range. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So like, they're just gonna launch a and artillery it barrage because they. I mean, they are way too close. <laughs> yeah, fifty million, million people in Seoul. Fifty yeah, I mean, million people, dude. If it's within artillery range, that's that's crazy. Is it really fifty million? Fifty million people in the in the Seoul. Like, it's insane, they man. The, the city never fucking ends. Yeah. I kind of feel bad for the Koreans because, like, it's been so long, like, y'all should have either stood up and done something already or... Oh, I mean, the, dude, the South, <laughs> Korean, friends are- the South Korean military is extremely capable. Mm-hmm. Like, they have, like, two million people in their military, and you everybody serves in the military. It's like the Israelis. Mandatory service. Yeah, mandatory service. And they're competent. Yeah. Um, like, we only have, like, 30,000 people on the peninsula. Yeah. So, like, that's why I feel I said- like other than the, the DMV, I feel like North Korea is probably overrated yeah to, to some extent they don't have the, like the, the the strengths of the u.s military isn't even really like our technology which it is of course it's our supply chain we can yeah, continue to feed our people. well that's what we i mean can, like yeah they can't I feel do like that after a year of fighting like they would just break down a month yeah. Yeah. a month yeah i mean I, I, I said a year just giving them yeah. some kind of credit <laughs> unless <laughs> the, 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 the trick there is if china comes in on their side resistors. yeah that's oh, the that's thing. a good point I mean, that's what happened good in the korean war good right point. the only reason good it turned out and turned into good the point. bloodbath that it was is because of the chinese so if, if it if it happened as a result of like something we did the chinese they probably wouldn't actively fight but they would give them those yeah. logistics and those supplies to continue to fight yeah mm-hmm. but if north korea went rogue and just like shelled seoul they would get nothing from china yeah and they'd be fucked they'd be done that's in, true you know, a month. I mean, if anybody ever invaded North Korea, the Chinese would back them up. A hundred percent. But if North, yep. North Korea ever fired for a something. shot, then yep. I feel like North China's Korea gonna... wants something. That's why they've been pressing buttons. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they don't. They, they're not. Lives. They're not stupid. They, they, they know they're not going to win man. a war. They just want a stimulus <laughs> yeah, check. Yeah. yeah, essentially, it's essentially <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Pay us not to make nukes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, he knows God, what he's the doing. World's just a freaking. <laughs> chessboard <laughs> it is it is a chessboard that we were pawns in yeah we were even, literal pawns yeah we were not even like individual people like our unit in spent and as Gar was just one little pawn on the chessboard of kandahar oh Afghanistan. yeah oh yeah for sure a tiny pawn yeah 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 very much so 80 guys on a little tiny dirt hill mm-hmm. is it only one of whom is sitting with us right now yes dustin's Indeed. mothers yeah. infamous <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> now he remembers. Uh, yep. Yes. Yep. We're uh, we're sitting here with Dustin Smothers. Actually, I'm not sitting with anybody. Yeah, I'm sitting Luke, here with Dustin Who are you sitting Smothers. with? Smothers. So Smothers lives only about four hours from me. Yeah. I should say yeah. Dustin, I guess. And he drove up and uh, <laughs> was gracious enough to come up for a couple of days. And but we've had a good time, man. It's been good hanging out. We have. Yeah. It's uh. It's it's different than Bama. Yeah. It's pretty up here. Yeah. Yeah, it you, is. You're in the hardwood forest up here in mountains. Yeah. You get yeah. away from that pine and the flat and the red clay and all that stuff. It is. I feel like Knoxville is kind of a transition between what I like to call upper south, you know, like like Kentucky, northern yeah. Tennessee, <laughs> Virginia, yeah. well, western Virginia. And, and so to, funny and thing, though, uh, we had to drive up a mountain to get to where we were going to go fishing. Uh-huh. And I hate heights, dude. I was whining like a little girl pretty much the entire time of going up that hill. <laughs> and we went up and over a little hill to go to. And it's like uh-huh. 90 degree turns, literally. Like, yeah. You would but, take a 90 degree turn and go up another. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a, that's a proper mountain road. I mean, that's like, that's even Colorado, Wyoming, yeah. like as far that's, as the actual climb. Now, granted, you're not doing it for 6,000 feet like you would. Yeah, you know, and you're not Colorado. starting at 6,000 feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes a big difference on the And the trees uh, are there, so you yeah. don't get that like sheer drop-off feeling. Yeah, that's right. So. I've actually thought about that a lot hiking around here because you can get up on these mountains, and you don't realize the steepness of them because yeah. the trees are right in on the right. trail. But if you were to, like out west, if you take all those trees away, you're looking straight down a shoot. Straight down. And it feels like you fall off of it. <laughs> but here, because of the trees, you you are robbed of that illusion. Yeah. 
So you don't realize it until you stop and actually think, this is actually No, really I was steep. thinking the entire drive up there. I was like, <laughs> dude, one wrong turn and we are just... Yeah. Um, Dustin, usually how we uh, we kick these things off is we kind of like give you the opportunity to give us a little bit of your background. Um, yeah. What you were doing before you joined the Army, why you chose to join the Army, why you chose the infantry, and kind of your path that wound up with you at uh, Bravo Company 164 and you know, in five minutes or less. Yeah, you know, I didn't think about how I actually ended up at Bravo Company, but that's okay. So, yeah. I think I was like 19 years old, and I thought about joining the Army. Short and simple, thought about doing military intelligence, whatever. Mm-hmm. Went to him. Everything was fine. Can't remember what happened, but I continued on with school for that next year and a half or so. So I'm 20 years old. Wanted to be a mechanical engineer. Don't really know why. Young, just kept going. Got really tired of the school scene for some reason. I wanted to help people. As most people kind of say that when they go into the army, like I thought I'd be like helping out like hurricane victims or something, you know, <laughs> yeah. on my off so time. So you join the like, infantry? If we're, if yeah. we're, I mean, if we're not at war, you know, like mm-hmm. right. Sounds about right, right? No, it wasn't the infantry at this at that time. I had an uncle in the Seabees mm-hmm. in the Navy, and he taught me into nuclear engineer for the Navy. Smart. So I was pretty much a Navy boy. Throughout the, roll. throughout the recruiting process. Yeah. Right. Uh, took the ASVAB with them. Scored high enough for nuclear engineer. You had a disagreement with the recruiter. Yeah, I had a, <laughs> I had a disagreement with the uh, <laughs> Navy recruiter. We kind of got into it a little bit. Heated exchange and, uh, you know, like most recruiting places that I know is, like, you can just walk right across the hallway yeah, straight into together. another branch. <laughs> yeah. So I walked straight into the army office and was like, Hey guys, uh, they all kind of looked at me. They obviously always have way more recruiters too. Like mm-hmm. there's like four of them versus the one Navy, uh, yeah. air force guy wasn't even there. I don't even, don't even think there was a Marine guy there either <laughs> yeah. at the time. All right. So there were plenty of army guys and I was like, I just kind of walked in there and said, Hey guys, I've just took the ASVAB. What do you got? I'm not going Navy anymore. Mm. And no, I didn't even ask, really. I just kind of like, let's go infantry. I mean, I've thought about it. I've kind of played enough Call of Duty. and <laughs> <laughs> Just, just like yeah, just, Duty, bro. Yeah, I don't know. I was young and dumb, I guess. I, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Well, you know, when I was in basic training. I wanted an experience. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That but was it's... different from just going to work on airplanes. or Right. Yeah. It's more of a nine to five thing. Yeah. Well. I say all the time when you're a little kid and you play army, you're you're playing infantry. Yeah, you know? you're not. Yeah, yeah, you're not playing. Yeah. You're not playing 88 Mike or you know you're not, 92 you're Delta not. or whatever the little personnel thing is. I think yeah. the closest I ever got was maybe with my little airplanes. Yeah, well, sure, but, everybody wants to be a pilot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah shut up, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to be a pilot because they see Top Gun and they want to be a pilot, yeah. right? And then they start figuring yeah. they have to actually have to be able to do math to be a pilot, and that's when you. Well, it's, it's funny because I actually came across the song uh, <laughs> "Danger Zone" on the way over here, so, yeah. and I listened to it a there couple times. Right. So, Get the Summer Man number two. Is it? Is it the summer? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait. July second. Yeah. I'll be watching it. I'll be. I'll be there for the premiere. Nice. Will it be open at a theater? That's, that's the thing. Well, that's why they keep pushing it back. Mm-hmm. They they won't they, they won't the release it tickets. in anything gotcha. other than full theatrical release. Yeah, they got because why would why would why wouldn't they? Yeah, <laughs> they they would lose so much money if they don't do that. Man, I would just pay like twenty dollars to watch it on. <laughs> you like, would, but like most people wouldn't. I feel like you have I to would. see it in theater though. It's, it's Top Gun. You know, you gotta see they, it though. on the big screen. <laughs> uh, it, it, you can't beat the big screen to be honest. It's, I thought that it would be something that would probably die out after this, but no. It's, I think what I think is going to happen is I think some movies are going to stick, yeah, mm-hmm. and like, but and then a lot of stuff's just going to come straight to home. But if it's like a big epic yeah. movie like Top Gun Two, yeah, I it's think gonna I come. think there's a divergence yeah. that yeah. that, that happened yeah, through yeah, this. Sure. There is, and you've already seen it. Like, there's some things that you can just immediately watch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you're not gonna be able to watch Star Wars movies first thing. No, but no. you know you can watch some random like indie film. I don't know. Disney has a drama or something. Disney wild, did release wild Mulan hair on, up their uh, butt sometimes. Mm. Yeah, they did with with Mulan. 
That's true. Yeah, they but but you had to pay like forty bucks just to watch it the one time, though. Until but the, yeah, but, the, but the thing is, like, they do that, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we'll make our own." But you know, because as soon as they release one copy, it gets pirated, yeah. and like, yeah. that is true. You know, that that's, is true. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't see that model surviving for the big blockbusters. They just yeah. have too yeah. much to lose. Yeah. But any, anyway, <laughs> anyways, we, that's a weird digression. Well, so that was know. a weird tangent. So how, uh, how did you end up in Bravo Win Six Four? Yeah. yeah. So well, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Uh, on, you huh? you went across the uh, you went across the street to go join yeah Halloween. yeah so whatever but twenty first birthday January fifteenth mm-hmm. nineteen I was born in nineteen ninety so January fifteenth fifteenth I was turning twenty one two days later I was on a bus mm-hmm. so that was that still might have been a little still might have been a little hungover but mm-hmm. yeah. man I was nervous I hopped on the bus we took off and. It's a funny story because I'm gonna I'm gonna implement basic training into this just a little bit because there were only two people in my basic training platoon that were from Alabama. Stuart Lang, he was in Alpha mm-hmm. Company. It was me and him throughout, and and it was funny because nobody from my platoon when they were calling out where you're going, it was always either Lewis or Carson. Mm-hmm. And it got to him, they said Stuart. He's from Alabama. Mm-hmm. It got to me. They said Stewart, and we kind of got together, and we were like, "Where's Fort Stewart at?" <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I've never heard of this place before. And the drill sergeant was like, "Oh, you guys, this sucks." Oh, yeah, third ID. That's yeah. actually that's like a universal story. Bad. Everybody's drill sergeants talk shit about third ID when they get. They really the do, but yeah. it's mine did. Really wasn't that bad, to be honest. You know, I'm sure there were worse places. Which one? I, I, th- I think that I think that stigma <laughs> comes from. Like War on Terror, two thousand three and to two thousand ten. Yeah, you know when you know third IDs running around and their their Bradleys and their tanks, and everyone else is you know walking. So I got you. That, I think I think that's where that antagonism comes from. Well, also it's a fucked up unit. But well, we know that. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what well, in my mind, I didn't really care about the unit. I cared about where you went, where yeah. it was, yeah. and what was around yeah. it, and. Yeah, having Savannah sure. only forty minutes away is, is was nice. Yeah, and you you had a beach like an hour away, and mm-hmm. you know, home yeah. was only seven hours away. You know, I mean, for me, it wasn't yeah. that bad. But right. anyways, we digress again. So <laughs> after basic training, me and Lane from basic training showed up at the same time to report, which was kind of nice because you know, of course, you're nervous like showing up to unit, mm-hmm. and. We went through the MRC process, hopped in the van to go to 164, showed up at battalion, and they looked at both of us. The guy that came to get us for our companies, Mm -hmm. he was from Alpha Company, and he asked our uh, PT score. (laughs) Yes. And uh, we both had like, above 270s and he asked which one was older mm. and Lang was older and he said we'll take Lang from Alpha Company so I went to Bravo and that's pretty much how nice. I got to Bravo so it could have very easily been completely different man that could have like completely changed your life oh without it I think about it all the time yeah wow that's that's wild man well that's one of the things that's really crazy about being in the military and how you end up where you're at. It's just mm. chance and yeah. happenstance, you know, luck, yeah. luck of the draw or not luck of the draw or however you look at it. But there's so many little finite details. Like if he would have went to the bathroom yeah. <laughs> and I was the only one just sitting there, I probably would be an alpha <clears throat> company or something. Yeah, you know? I know, man. All these crazy little details that put you where you are. You know? I do remember walking into that company for the first time, though. Bravo? Yeah. 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 It was a... Uh, you were, I, when when did you get? I there? did. I was scared to wear my contacts, so I had glasses on. So I just nice. like, I remember your nerd. glasses. Yeah, I forgot. They called you. me Spider Man or like Peter Parker all the time. <laughs> I don't know why. I <laughs> forgot, forgot about your little glasses that you. Yeah, had. yeah. That's so right. this this was 2011. So this was yeah. I was like one of the for some reason I was like one of the first Bad. privates. Yeah. That they had seen in a long time because when I showed up, like everybody was like looking at me like. More than usual. Like, I've yeah. seen a new private come in. Yeah. And I didn't really care. But they cared about me for some reason. Uh, 
you were in that very first batch of privates. It was, I, I felt like the only people that beat you there were probably Phillips and Clark and a couple of those guys. I feel like they've been there for. They had been, yeah, been there for a, a good little, little while. Probably that was probably the gap. They were the they yeah. were the re reinforcements after the deployment. And you were the first, like just normal. yeah, I was the first to yeah, be yeah. Uh, for something that we didn't know was going to be happening <laughs> sooner or later. Right? Yeah, yeah, you were probably the first wave for the deployment that no one knew it was going to happen. Yeah. That's true. So my question here is this: how how were you treated by Special Loot Coffee upon your arrival? Coffee was actually the good one. Okay, That's right. Good. You got the good. You got, you got the bad. The really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can deal with the bad. Yeah. What you can't deal with is the really bad. Yeah. yeah. The ones yeah. that try too hard. And... Yep. Yeah. There are a few of those. Yeah. yeah. Coffee. Uh. Coffee helped me out of a pretty dark time, to be honest. I mean, it was a pretty dark time me being the only new guy mm -hmm. like i was i was fresh meat bro yeah and they loved it yeah. Yeah, <laughs> a couple lie. of them i mean man that was the culture back then man yeah it was for, for better or worse mm -hmm. so would you coffee, think coffee you... coffee put me on skyrim and you know kind of, <laughs> kind of lost myself in the video games there for a few weeks dude yeah. i would seriously come back like Lang from Alpha Company that went to Alpha Company. Mm -hmm. He was having a grand old time. I don't know what he did that I didn't do, but yeah, he would look at me sometimes and he'd be like, "Dude, are you okay, man?" Like, and I was like, "Dude, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I hate my company uh, with a passion." <laughs> makes me wonder how much uh, the hazing stuff still goes on, or if it still even goes on. I'm yeah, sure they got a not. card now. Like, oh. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure it goes on to an extent, yeah. but probably not yeah, quite as I'm sure there's, bad as it was 10 years ago. Because we'll that ask, was 10 years ask ago. Ask Daddy Ott <laughs> when we get him on, how, how it yeah. is now. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And the best part is uh, I got appointed to, I think my team leader was Private First Class King. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, he was my team leader. Really? Oh, yes. man. Oh, man. So he couldn't really protect me from anything. Yeah, nothing. he couldn't do yeah. anything for you. He couldn't do anything. Yeah. So I was just kind of screwed. Yeah. Now, That's correct me if I'm wrong, it, it was in this time period that Tustin Smothers Day became a thing, right? It was before the deployment? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that really... still a thing? Is it still a recognized holiday in the city of Jasper? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, I, I got a plaque for it that said St. Patty's Day is Dustin Wally Smothers Day in <laughs> Jasper. That's right. That was right before we left that they did that. We like can the cut this out, before. right? We're going to cut this out. Yeah, we're totally going to cut it out. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was before Afghanistan. Yeah, why? I don't. I don't know. Because you're a fucking hero. Because you were going yeah, to Afghanistan. Yeah, they just yeah. knew what was going to happen. Because <laughs> <laughs> I I got to the unit like a week before we left, and that was one of the thing. Like, because I I got there after you came back from that ho that four day pass, mm -hmm. and that was like my first introduction was. Oh, Dustin I guess Smothers. it was a four day. Yep. Everybody was giving you a hard time about it, so that was my introduction to Dustin Smothers. Yeah. He, so. has his, he, has, he has his own holiday in Jasper, Alabama. You know, I think one of the things that was, I wonder how unique it was to our deployment, because when we deployed to Iraq, we were pretty much boistered up like eight, nine months before we deployed. Like, we had the last batch of privates. But for our deployment, because everything was so last minute. <laughs> yeah, we got. Every, we were just like. <laughs> scrambled and we were just crazy bro pops in on yeah. him. i'm like where like, where are these guys coming like from dozens it's, of dudes we're about to yeah. leave and they're just yeah. tossing people at us now like, it's fairly unusual i mean the patch chart is usually published like 18 months out yeah it's so like usually units know at least 18 months out that they're scheduled yeah, to go on. yeah well, that's the thing is well that's the thing like dude even coffee like Y'all have talked about it plenty of times. Like, mm. there were talk. It was talk. Yeah. yeah there was talk. Know. Yeah. But, like, just tell us, you know? Yeah. Why yeah. did we have they to be at NTC? They probably didn't know themselves. Why did you know? we have to be at NTC? Yeah. We weren't. We, we knew before we went to NTC, we were going to Afghanistan. Might be right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But we found out NTC. We didn't we, know how bad it was going yeah, to right. be. Yeah. NTC is where we found out yeah. we were going to Pan. And I still would question that, guard. like, Okay, is it going to be really bad? Mm -hmm. I kind of could tell because Sergeant, Sergeant I was yeah. pretty a straightforward dude and uh, yeah. a dude that I looked up to. And we'll get to this. It was kind of like my rock, like yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think he was for a lot of people. people. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. most people's rock. Yeah, and he was unmovable. <clears throat> like yeah. rock was is the yeah. perfect like analogy because he was. If he was hungry, he was thirsty. You never knew. 
you know, I hate it because I don't know what went on in his head. In his head, because yeah, well, I've thought about it from his perspective. He's looking at us, thinking some of these guys are going to get wounded. You know, yeah, some, but some I mean, are going to get killed. So I he's think having, there's a breaking point for everybody. And, yeah, you know, but I think he had to sit there and tell us all that stuff while also like trying to stick to yeah. his. Like you said, that rock steadiness, which was what everybody knows him for, is his consistency. Yeah. He was always the same, always he even was. killed. He like, was. Never let stuff fluster him. Never let and let stuff. me tell you something about him. He's a leader. He is a person that if I messed up, I wasn't scared about getting smoked by him. Yeah. If I messed up, I was ashamed of myself for letting that man down. Yeah. yeah. And that's all it ever took. Like, yeah. I didn't want to mess up. I think it's a sign of a true leader that, when when you reason. are concerned about messing up on the job, not because of the fallout, but because you don't want to let them down. You yeah. Know, that, that means yeah. that you actually care yes. about what that person thinks and what that person has to say. I knew he had my back no matter what. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's oh, a two-way yeah. street. I mean, he cared about yeah. what I'm, I'm sure he cared about what we thought about him, you know, so, which everybody, that's one of the reasons he was such a great platoon sergeant. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, we, uh, we, were we will have him on. Have we're very, very lucky. I'm yeah. really looking forward to having him on. Yeah, for sure. Oh, he's coming. He's good. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. At some point. Yeah. Hopefully. He's, he's in Korea right now. He's in Korea right now. Right so. now. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. So we've had trouble getting in touch with him, but... Um, yeah. yeah. He'll talk. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I have no doubt that he'll, he'll, he'll join talk. us. I mean, he's got he's got a lot to say, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, he's, a, he's a command star major for 2-7 infantry. Okay. You know, so he is... He has continued two seven. Career. Yep, 2-7. Two 2-7. Seven. Two seven. Mm-hmm. I feel like I just want to go down there and be like, do you yeah. guys know who you have as your command sergeant yeah. major? Like, you know how lucky you are? <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And, you know, you, I mean, uh, that, that, that kind of thing is the kind of thing I'd be open to doing as part of this project is, is talking to formations about, especially the ones that have leaders that were on that deployment. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, you need to listen to this person <laughs> because they, they've seen yeah. it. They've experienced it. They're not just quoting out of the FM 7-22 about what you should yeah. do. They've, they've well, experienced it. Well, the thing it. about him is... I mean, we we can cut this out if we need to, but yeah, you know, I think a lot. It, I didn't because I didn't know any better. Like I didn't care. Yeah, I just knew he was a good man and he was smart. But the, I think there were a lot of people that that questioned him because he was an E seven with no combat deployment. Yeah, no combat deployment. Yeah. And yeah, let me tell you something. Didn't matter, man. That did not matter no. one bit. No. I mean, James Ott saw more combat than you know what. It probably almost. helped him. Yeah, that's true. It probably made yeah, him, potentially probably had him more well rounded out for that deployment. I mean, that was the thing for us is like he came to us in Iraq and that was his first deployment. And everybody knew it, so everybody had yeah. everybody had their hackles up a little bit and like, okay, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah, but we obviously um, were proven wrong. That's one of those instances instances where it did not matter. Great dude. Yeah, I don't even think he ever missed a mission. No, I mean, Sarnot probably saw more combat than anybody else in the platoon yeah. because he was on every single every patrol. single mission. Yeah, yeah. And if he didn't, it was for a damn good reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> another thing we kind of have talked to a lot of people is kind of identifying that point on the deployment when it kind of got real, because mm -hmm. you know you can work it up in your heads like, oh, this is gonna yeah. be crazy and whatnot, and then we're walking around for the first couple of weeks, we're like, we're not even getting shot at, and yeah. I haven't seen an IED. Like, well, that was a big thing for our squad because yeah. you guys had started in contact and you guys hadn't got any. Uh, I'll never forget uh, my team, me, Brown and Hewlett were kind of bitching about it at some point to mm -hmm. Nance. And Nance kind of got mad at us because yeah. he was like, you don't fucking want this. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sorry that I'm cussing, but he was no, literally like mad at us. Like, yeah, when it happens, you'll know and you'll realize real quick that mm -hmm. you don't want this. Yeah. Yeah. And he was right, <laughs> but for us, like, yeah, we were jealous, man. We yeah. were so jealous of you guys. Yeah. Well, it didn't last long. So, I just, <laughs> God. Yeah. It, it what take, an idiot it, I was. Uh, it didn't take. It doesn't long. make you an idiot. Yeah. I mean, like Third Platoon did the same thing. They yeah. they went out hunting for CIBs. Yeah. And, no. Like deliberately looking for them, and uh, even Captain Kitching in know. his interview was like, "Careful what you ask for, because yeah. once it starts, you don't control when it ends." And I thought that was a really good. Uh, Good way of looking at it because everyone always says, Oh, careful what you wish for, you might just get it. It's like, No, yeah. careful what you wish for because you don't get to control it once it starts. You don't. 
You don't. Um, and the first few times that it does, you're okay with it. Yeah. But once yeah, people you, you start getting know. hurt and you realize what is happening, yeah. Because even the first few times you get shot at, you really don't process it properly. Like the first time you're like, what is You don't. I'm you getting don't. shot at? From where? Uh, and it so gets it takes a couple- progressively worse. <laughs> Yeah. Well, as you start to, I don't want to say too. worse, but I mean, you get smarter about it. You get smarter about it. Yeah. But absolutely, it still scares the crap out of you. Just well, yeah, and that's and that's the thing is it's not scary at first because you don't know any better. But then, yeah, like, no, it, three yeah. months in, you're like, like when we think back to the first firefight we were in, we're like, that was bad. Like we yeah. we didn't understand at the time, but that was bad. Yeah. Uh, if that had firefight had happened in July, we would it would have broke some people. Of, Oh yeah, oh yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it would have broke some people. Um, so it's just it's just weird how that how that plays out. Yeah, but you, I mean, you raise a good point. I mean, the really the only thing that kind of made it serious for us was when people started getting hurt. I knew things were truly real when we were clearing the horn. Yep. And the third platoon was getting jacked. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget the Apaches flying over. Um slamming rounds down and it, it scared me like yeah. i was like because i mean they came out of nowhere like i didn't realize that they were there and there was like three of them overhead and it was like the loudest cracks i've ever heard like because it's what 30 mic mics or something just it is yeah laying waste just <laughs> and i looked up and they're just and i was like dude i'm in a legit friggin' yeah. war zone like this is not a candy deployment like I've seen and researched right. and people have talked about like we've, yeah, yeah. we've got a lot going on. Yeah. And this was, this was before like some of the major ID explosions. So I didn't even really know too much about ID. Yet. Yeah. So that's this, when this I was before, like, before a lot of stuff is before, before everything. I think this, really, yeah. Before I think, Luxmore. No, this was actually good. Good point. Good yeah. thing you brought that up. Well, it's crazy about that operation though. For me is like, it was kind of an eye opener for a lot of people. It was so early. Yeah, yeah it was this early. Was in May. We had we had been there probably not even a full two months at that point, you know. I think it gave us the sense of we're just doing this in like a week. Yeah. So I mean, the more we do this in our own AO, like mm-hmm. it's just gonna continuously get worse and worse and worse. Well, that's the other thing. I think if you listen to the radios, you're hearing about everything that's happening outside of our formation. You know, Alpha Company one, two, three, Josh Wetzel stepped on his IED that day. Like you know, they were losing legs and they were pe- having people get shot and like A and A were getting shot. You had freaking F sixteens doing little yeah, flyovers, C one thirties doing package drops, like I got blown the fuck up. Like mm-hmm. a lot yeah, of shit yeah, happened yeah. on that on that mission. That, like yeah. to really put it together, like, hey, we're in a this is a war. Yeah. Like and yeah, I'd be we curious to know that probably was one of more the more intensive clearing operations that's happened in Panjoy since Medusa. I'd be yeah, willing we to bet it's probably of way farther north of like the far Further than most north northern unit getting yeah. jacked up too. Yeah, so I mean, I was like, guys. yeah, yeah, and this the, is not okay. And was it unique to just that operation? It's like it's not like you cleared them out and then that was it. You yeah, know, right. it's like it's not like you like took a city and then Dude, that city's it, calm there was no further. clearing out. Like that's the first time where I walked into a village and there was nobody, nobody there. there. Yeah, yeah nobody. it was already cleared. And out. that is, and it was a big <laughs> village. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was scary to me. Like I'm 22 year old, just like. Every village we've been to has been the kids like, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. no. And we did some sketchy stuff too, like driving that gator all driving through all those roads there. and up in all those villages. We drove the Matt V's down some we'll of those roads. We'll get to the gator. Like, <laughs> oh man. I was always very, I did not like the gator, man. Like I, I stayed yeah, away was, from that thing. I was like, that's a freaking bullet magnet. And it's got was. four 12 inch tires driving around through here just asking to get blown up. I can't. But what I was going to say about the engineers is the uh, E7 there was talking about a guy named uh, Sergeant Lily. They got shot through the The neck. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to call this? (laughs) I know the. He called it like a guzzle or something. Guzzle, yeah. Yeah. And he did. Like we we linked up with him on that mission and he was telling the story about how he got shot through. Right here. Yeah. Was it on that mission? Was it on clearing the horn that he got shot? No, that was the E7 telling us about. Oh, no, about it was a, yeah, okay, he was him. on a completely different mission at gotcha. some other time. Yeah, because there wasn't a whole lot of time between those two missions. Yeah. Was there not? No. Like See, I'm bad weeks. with the time frames. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's just kind of. Because we wrapped up clearing the horn like 
June 2nd or 3rd. And then we turned around. Two weeks later. Yeah, June, we June 10th sketches. was yeah, Luxmore. So June 12th guess. was... Uh, but yeah, I mean, that that we've talked about before. That was a really tight, um, like, couple weeks. Yeah. You know, things were real It bad. was. I never thought about it that way. I didn't know it was that close, to be honest, until you said something. Mm-hmm. And, like, not even, like, 10 days after um, Sergeant Lily passed is when Jay hit his. A couple days after that is when uh, DeSedino hit his. Mm-hmm. Ju- like, June and July were spicy. Yeah. Real spicy. That, you know, that might have... I was talking to Coffee like, when, you know, he left, and he was, like, my best friend. Yeah. And came to me and was like, hey, look, let's go with him. And I was like, man, I can't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to stay, man. And I... No reason to it. I just like felt like I, don't, I know they had their reasons to, but I just couldn't. Mm-hmm. Why? But I don't know. I, I, I guess I would have felt like a failure. Yeah. I don't know. Like I needed to prove something and continue with you guys because you guys were there. And, mm-hmm. and, and I, don't, I don't, the reason it's so hard to speak about is because I don't want to make it seem like the other guys that did go. Yeah feel less important because it's not that way no so i don't really know how to put it in words i just i just at that point in time i still had enough left in me Mm -hmm. and i could keep going now was that the case later on down the road no because something did happen and i couldn't Mm -hmm. i was a liability literal liability like Mm -hmm. i mean that's one of the things about i mean is What's really crazy is if you look at the numbers from our deployment, you know, if there was a hundred ish people on the, I would like to know the real numbers because it's pretty, if you you look at the numbers of people who at the beginning of the deployment, we probably had just shy of a hundred people in the Mm -hmm. entire company out of that a hundred there's let's go ahead and say a hundred original original. Yeah. 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 Out of that hundred, there's 10 or 15 that aren't patrolling really. They're like support staff or whatever. Yeah. And so when you do the math yeah. by the purple hearts that we had in our company, you've got about a 40% chance of getting yeah. fucked up, you know, and that's yeah. not including the mental attrition. And, so, the, and that was, I don't know the numbers, but I mean, it was I feel like that was a way worse. Yeah. I mean, we, we, I'm sure as many guys uh, quit because of mental attrition mm-hmm. as there was wounded and as far as like the numbers are concerned. Yeah. So even just physically, the physical danger, you had about a 40% chance of getting fucked up somehow. A TBI, yeah. IED, yeah. shot, whatever. And so, you know, and the, the mental thing on top of it. So one of the things that we've actually taken leaps and bounds here to do mm. is destigmatize the whole idea yeah, of people quitting. And, like and you have to because yeah. it, it's hard to like put words into, you know, I don't know. What do I say when you ask me that? Like, I, yeah. why did I stay? I don't. Well, I mean, you, you answered it. You hadn't reached your breaking point yet. I hadn't, mm-hmm. and I knew I could keep going. And everybody has it. Yeah. Everybody has one. Every single person has one. Yeah. yeah. And if they don't, if they say they don't, then they're lying. Yeah. They're lying. And you know, that's why I really, it's really important to me, like Luke said, to destigmatize the guys that said, I, I've reached my limit. You know, it's, it's, it's okay. You yeah, know, no, it is. Yeah. It is. Okay, because if you reach your limit and you don't tell somebody and you keep doing it, like you said, you become a liability. That's when yeah. you're not paying attention. You're if you're clearing, you're not doing it right. I you became a be liability. There. I did. Like so I will say that for the guys who quit and the guys who really stuck it out, there's actually a really interesting fact and a factoid about the guys who kind of uh the, the mental attrition that happened in our platoon mm-hmm. anyways, is the guys who ended up reaching that breaking point earlier on in the deployment. Yeah were oftentimes married or had kids they did you know yes and yeah. at the time like yeah and we, we call it the, the dirty dozen or whatever like the the, the eight or nine or ten of us that actually we were all single all the way through. <laughs> every single one of us were single man yeah. except for sarnon you know pinnock and lily they stepped on that ied and it was a pretty big one yeah it was, it was pretty like, big one. big enough to where when salvador and me salvador told me to grab the medic bag while he took off mm-hmm. and I grabbed it and we showed up and we couldn't see anything. Like it was, you could kind of see like 
body you figures. could see you could see like boys and stuff like laying on the ground mm-hmm. but it was so dusty you couldn't see anything all i remember seeing is <laughs> a boot a boot in the middle of the road with mm-hmm. uh, just a boot and i was like hmm and then you could hear the scream and uh I, that was panic up under the bridge in the creek yeah he got tossed in the creek he probably he, to be honest he probably got tossed a little bit into the creek and like probably floated down a little bit I mean, there ain't no telling man mm-hmm. it's just uh i remember him the courage and the strength that it took for a guy that literally lost both of his legs to pull himself up under he was up under the bridge so he pulled himself mm-hmm. To let us know like where he was, hmm. and I remember like uh, Sergeant Baker and some people ran and grabbed him, pulled him out. There was like four people around him. It was pretty bad. Like we couldn't get tourniquets around his legs because they're so high up. And uh, that's when I looked up, and it was just Sergeant Ott through this like little opening taking care of Lily. So I made the decision to. Go help him. Mm-hmm. And it was just me and him at that point. And, you know, I had high hopes for Lily, to be honest. I mean, uh, he was missing some skin right here in his rib, mm-hmm. cage area. Didn't expect that. Like, it was an IED explosion. Like, what happened to you, bro? Yeah. But, no. It, I guess that's what happens sometimes. He was, was off, off to the, the side, side. Yeah. And cut, he got tossed a pretty good little it. ways from yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, other than that, like, uh, I thought it was going to be okay. Ended up not being that way, but that kind of happened that day and it kind of set me back. You know, I think I was okay with getting shot at, but after that, (laughs) yeah, I was not okay with getting blown up. Yeah. Like I'll get shot. I'll take that. But Mm -hmm. Well, we've talked about that a lot and that getting shot at, even though it sounds crazy to say this, but it's like, it's manageable. I can, I can at least fight back to that. You can, you can shoot back, you can get behind cover, you can, you can move out of the danger area, Yeah, but you got the the ID just completely. Little did I know the next seven, six months of my life was going to be so mentally wearing, just taking, like he, he knew that taking a step in life was going to be so scary. Not just one, but thousands, however long yeah. it took. And that was just kind of probably the second stroll. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, one that. thing that's kind of fascinating me is the, you, when you talk about Vietnam and World War II, there's all these like crazy jobs. So people are like, Oh my God, I, I never yeah. want to do that job. And for like Vietnam, for me, it was always like the people that would like crawl into Kate, like the holes and they like crawl through the holes with the flashlight. For me, it's like, I think for the Afghan war, that's, that's the mine hound guy. Yeah. That's the yeah. guy up front. That's the guy walking around yeah. <clears throat> with a handheld mine detector. And that's why we were talking. Uh, you said that everybody had kids that left and that's why when Sergeant Ott came up or Ott and Nance came up, was like, we need somebody to clear it up. It was between me and Hewlett, and I looked at Hewlett, and I said, you have a kid on the way, Mm -hmm. so I'll keep, I'll I'll do this. So I continued clearing down Summers. I I don't think I was as scared as I should have been. I think I I still had a whole lot of, like, probably naive in me, like, You're probably still you're still in shock too. Still shocked, dude. Probably should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I mean that that road that road to the gray putt where we slept that night, it, 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 it had been pretty clear. pretty well cleared. Yeah, yeah. we've gone back and forth on it like two or three times. So that takes. But that, that takes didn't really a lot say off. anything because do you remember walking back down Summerside? Yeah, we blew up like seven IEDs that we that, missed the next completely. day after after the engineers. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. a long. It was a long trail back down that road, especially looking back at where Where they they had hit it. Yeah, yeah. Dustin, you kind of—I don't know how you did it, but you—you've managed—you managed managed to find yourself on a lot of the missions where stuff happened. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you always you know, even, even, even missions that luck, weren't... <laughs> yeah, 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 there's example. that. But like, even missions that weren't our squad or our platoon, like, you just happened to be there. Um, you know, yeah, I think probably the only one where you kind of got a reprieve was Throat Chop because you were in the back. You, know, you were, you were there, job. but... Uh, What's it called? No, I wasn't, actually. You mentioned that, and I remember you talking about that, but I wasn't. Where were you? I was in the middle. Mm. Yeah, Phillips and all them were in the back, and I don't really know why I wasn't back there, and I can't not for the life of me remember. But Who I was, were you with, though? I was... Oh, probably because I was carrying the M14. Okay. Yeah. I Which was is. in the middle. I was kind of close to you, Grace, the entire time. Really? I was right beside Salvador and the medics the entire time. Yeah. Okay. Well, there was still weird because I don't remember. I, I don't remember seeing you. I mean, I remember seeing you earlier in the day because, like, we took a building and like we in the compounds and stuff. But like when everything went down, I don't remember seeing you until we got back in that shit creek and to walk back to the uh, checkpoint. Oh no! Yeah, no, I was. Uh, I wasn't too far away from. We're Todd. Hmm. Yeah. Did you I was see like Todd right get there. hit? Yeah. That's when it was right there. Like, yeah. Like mm-hmm. I was like the building that he turned the corner on. Mm-hmm. I was still like, I actually ran it into the door of that building mm-hmm. trying to get like off the road because I was like one explosion. Yeah. Two explosion. All right. Let me, let me, let me take a step back here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was right there, yeah. Everybody else was way back. I don't know why I was kind of like in the middle, but... You're probably right because you're carrying the M14. Yeah, Yeah. I was, which was terrible. (laughs) I I don't know why you hated the thing. I would have killed it too. In the middle of Najat? It's it's worthless unless you're stationed. In the middle of Najat? Like, what what, what, am I going to zoom in on a a leaf? (laughs) (laughs) Well, anyway, none of that really matters. But the the point is you, you, you found yourself... Even though you were yeah. in a different squad, a lot of times you found yourself in these situations. Um, you know, how how did that? Did you feel like it was just luck? It's like no matter what I do, bad stuff happens. Or yeah, I, I started to feel like I was kind of like bad luck, and I had to change a couple of things in my life for it to happen. It seemed like every it was like following me there for a long time, like. Is this ever going to go away? Whether it be Americans or Afghan. Afghan. Yeah. And I don't think that we talk about it enough. We took a lot of American casualties, but we took twice as many. Yeah. You know, maybe twice as many. I don't know how many, but. It's probably pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. And we took enough. And to oh, say yeah. twice as many on that, like, add it up yeah. on. Mental scars, like, you know, sure. mm-hmm. let's go ahead and start checking some more boxes and taking off some yeah. more marks, you know, it's just. Well, and those guys dealt with the mental attrition too. You could see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, every yeah. time we'd ask, ask their clearing element to clear out front, you could just see it on their faces. Mm-hmm. You know, they were like, no. It's sad because, uh, I, I mean, it's their country. Like, come on, guys. Right. Come on. Right. Um, And it'd be different if they're, I don't know. They just pretended like they didn't know how to use the thing. Yeah. That was their excuse. Well, we don't know how to use the mind hound. It's like, <laughs> I trained you yesterday. They didn't show a whole lot of spunk about taking their country for seriousness. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, it's because they... Because it wasn't their Depending country, on how like, you look at it, it wasn't it's their not, country. It's not. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. all from freaking Northeast Afghanistan. I mean, half of them looked like they were from Uzbekistan or something. Yeah. Almost like Asiatic yeah. looking, you know? They didn't even look like people from that area of the world. So They speak a different language. Different, they don't yeah, speak, speak a different language. And yeah. The only thing that they have in common. They didn't speak Pashto? No. Pashto? No, they, they would no. speak different dialects. Really? Different languages. Yeah. Yeah. See? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shows how much I went into depth of like <laughs> caring about what was going on. It also shows the arbitrariness of drawing lines in a place like Afghanistan. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you can't say that Afghanistan is one country <clears throat> when the people. There's so much going the languages on. and the cultures and everything is so diversely yeah. ranged yeah. and different. And I mean. When we were there in 2012, like you could probably stomp around in northern, Af- like northern Afghanistan, like way up north, probably be fine, you know. I mean, I think somebody told me like you could wear blue jeans in Kabul and yeah. be okay. Oh, yeah, back in the 60s, yeah. Is that what like it wasn't a thing then? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, like when, when we, we were, were there. Not when we were no. there. No, no. Uh, I'm talking about no. if you go up, like north, 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 north. Or, you know, like up up where it borders like Uzbekistan and was it Turkmen- yeah. Turkmenistan maybe? Like Mazari Sharif and that yeah. general area. I mean, it's like in that area of the, of the country, it's just a completely different world, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's wild to think. It's not like Afghanistan is a giant country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. Luke makes a good point. I mean, we we drew these. Well, we didn't draw them, but arbitrary lines got drawn and said this is Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas really, I mean, you got you got the Pashto in the in the south and the east, and like they cross that border with Pakistan freely. They don't recognize a border yeah. there. Yeah, it's all yeah, it's all, yeah, Pas- it's all yeah. Pashtun land. You know? so it's just Pashto land. It's all tribal yeah. land. You know, the Uzbeks up north, like they don't have anything in common with you yeah. know other than an arbitrary border mm-hmm. with people living in Kandahar. Uh, I mean, it's like the the little the little the little nibbit of Afghanistan that juts out yeah. to the east shares a border with China. Yeah, you know, so like it's it's wild to think that that country is is set in a particular space where it's so diversified as you go east to west and northeast to southwest yeah and so the people the, uh, are not going to be the same well and, and that's the thing is you know when we say the taliban it's not even always the taliban we we weren't all we weren't always fighting the taliban it's a whole people to be honest. just fighting the locals you know i'll never forget clearing and literally like a little kid would come up with a razor blade and throw it up under my mind hound mm-hmm just to see if it would pink, and I'm like, dude, why? Why? Leave me alone, please stop. We well, you know why, because because his un- uncle Uncle Terry around yeah. the corner said, "Hey, throw this down there and see if it makes a noise." Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Kid doesn't know any better. He just knows that he got a he got something out of it, and Uncle Uncle Terry, you know, was nice to him. Yeah, probably shouldn't have gave him all those pins. <laughs> <laughs> probably shouldn't have done that. Kalam, Kalam, yeah, Kalam, or Kalam, yeah, Kalam, God. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of the people that we fought, they weren't they weren't even Taliban. They're drug runners. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, there's and then you go out to the east, you got Haqqani, which is literally just a mercenary force. Mm-hmm. You know, they they deal their arms dealers and their drug dealers and they're, you know, just guns for hire. They, they do all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. You know, they don't a lot of times they don't care about the, the religious. You talk about like, like, oh, OK, I got you further east. Than yeah. Like, way yeah, further. It's like for the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like up, up core towards Jalalabad and coast. Um, and then you've also got the, <laughs> um, oh, what are they called? Uh, just escaped my mind. But yeah, I mean, you got all, all kinds of factions out there. And it's just all... crazy that you go from like desert to a valley of opium and marijuana, and then you continue on, and then you got mountains and mm-hmm. all on this one little. Middle Eastern country. Yeah. And a lot of that we can thank uh, good old Cold War uh, yeah, yeah. aid projects. No. Yeah. We're building yeah. airfields and irrigating the the Argandab River and the Russians are building airfields and they're building stuff up in all over. They it's did a good crazy. job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like nobody's ever been able to take over Afghanistan. Why did we think we could do <laughs> any better? Yeah. 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 Well, we, well, we tried to get too political here, but yeah. we went in with a different mission. And I didn't went, mean like yeah. take no, over. No, yeah. like, no, I'm saying we went in with a mission and we stayed with that one. Basically, right. is what yeah. it amounts to. Yeah. That's um, but, yeah, we're paying the price for it. I mean, and uh, you know, you literally went, like paying. Yeah, like put it with dollars. It. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, Luke alluded to it earlier, but it's. You know, when we talk about, oh, Kandahar's about to fall, or Zangabad's overrun, and Mazumgar's overrun, Spurwingar's mm-hmm. overrun, it's... That's sad. It, it's sad, but it's not our fault. You no, know, I know that. It, I know it's just what, yeah. the thought of losing something that we fall for. But we didn't. That's And that's the thing. We didn't We didn't fight to take Spurwingar. We didn't... You know, no, we, we protected it. Yeah, mm-hmm. we did. And we did it successfully while we were there. And we tried to change... Mm-hmm. The course, but let's let's be real. That's that was, no, no. I, I mean, that's a few. That's a few. That wasn't our responsibility, man. Yeah, our it wasn't. And yeah. I was young. You know, they told me to go to Afghanistan, and that's what yeah. I did. And, and that's what you did. And you did your job. And that's yeah. and you did your job well. That's all. Extremely I mean. well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're we're talking about people that I have uh, that went sometimes. No, not even close. <laughs> you know, when when I think about guys that went over there in, with our deployment and 
and just did the job and did it well, you you stand out above the rest. I mean, you, you have two awards for valor, man. Like that's you know exceptionally rare that is in the United States Army to have two different awards for different you know events. It's it's extremely unusual. I feel like if you're in a hot zone, then probably not that rare. <laughs> you know, it's really like it's, it's it's actually pretty rare. Like even like a spe- on the special operations, there's like very very few that have multiples, and usually they're from different tours. They're not even from the same you know, the same one. So what you're confirming is I'm very unlucky. <laughs> I'm confirming is that you're a badass. <laughs> well, that's that's is, never the case. Like it's well, it's just not. Well, the what case. we're confirming is that you got some grit, son. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not even really grit. It was just kind of more like a a blacked out and mm. went. I don't know. <laughs> you just you just turn off your brain. You yeah. disable your thinking functions, and you do. Um, and a lot of times that's what got me through missions. Was just like. Fuck it. Turn off my brain. Just go. Just go. Just do it. Worry about it later. There's nothing. Like yeah, that. dude. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't, to be honest, like I've thought about it and I, I don't know what happened. I knew that t- when somebody got hurt, I wanted to know who and I wanted to yeah. help. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. That's all I really remember. I don't know. About those moments. That's it. Yeah. It's, there was nothing heroic about that saying that. Like, I just w- knew somebody was hurt. Yeah. Well, what stands out to me is, especially when we talk about the the Afghan soldier that stepped on the IED, which is, mm-hmm. oh, I yeah. Mean, yeah, yeah that, I mean, if you want to talk about a video yeah. that has made a difference in a lot of people's lives, that, that, <laughs> that, the video of that event absolutely has, is, has had an effect on a lot of people. It's, it, dude, come on. No, I'm I'm dead serious. I'm not even. Bro, kidding. there's a one point where I literally like grabbed his bone and I say like, "Oh no, that's bone!" <laughs> like I sounded so like. But you did it, man. But the thing is, like, you know how many people have seen that video, and how many times that video has been shared as an example of this is what battlefield trauma looks like. This, it, it's not some sticks. It's not some sticks lane. It's not some that is a good point. mannequin over here. Yeah. Like, it's messy. It's dirty. It is. Like to find the wound that ultimately killed that guy. Like it wasn't apparent. Like mm-hmm. the wound that killed that guy. You know, a, a, a lesser medic may never have found that. Right. Yeah. You're right. Um, and you know, you don't have to save the guy. You have to keep the guy alive until the bird gets there. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's all you got to do. Yep. And do your best at it, but I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, I mean. Well, you can't say yeah, that. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I heard an explosion, man. What stands out to me the most about that is you heard the explosion and there was like almost no delay. Yeah. You just start running. And as you're running, you're like, who's hit? Who's hit? Like, you didn't wait to find out who was hit before you ran. You just start running. I would want somebody to do the same for me. And I just had to be there. Was I right? Probably not, because I was the assistant gunner. <laughs> so I kind of left. I kind of left my uh, my homeboy. He was just kind of <laughs> there without rounds. But now, dude, uh, we've agreed that the two forty was useless anyway. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> somebody was hurt, and I went. That's mm-hmm. that's all I know to say, and. Well, I think would that, it always be that way with me? At that time, no. I think it would have. At that time, yes. Yeah. It kept for a long time. Yeah. But as we say, those check marks keep ticking. Yeah. Well, the check marks keep ticking, ticking, and like you said earlier, you gain a lot more intelligence about the battlefield, especially early on. Like someone, someone gets hurt, you're like, I gotta go save them. By October, somebody gets hurt, you're like, okay, there's IEDs everywhere. Let's take a second and pause. And then go get him. Like, he's not going to bleed out in the next five seconds. You know? And, like, we, we we matured to that point. I didn't really care. I didn't care. I didn't care about my own safety, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it was more like I had a whole lot of adrenaline going. That's a big part of it. Because yeah. I was running pretty quick. You yeah. were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All you can hear in the camera is just... <laughs> You're hauling ass, man. So, I don't, I don't know, man. I was just... Uh, as I was running, I looked at... Everybody else still laying on the ground, and I was like, "Well, <laughs> is anybody else gonna get up off the ground?" <laughs> so I don't know, dude. I don't. I just ran. Is there anything else that really needs to be said? I just ran towards something. 
And that's the thing, man, is that you know, you you, you just push. You know? Yeah, you push as hard as you can. Doesn't matter, like because if you don't, you're gonna have regret. And I think regret is gonna be the killer for most people. Yeah. And we kind of talked about it last night. Mm -hmm. You don't want regret. And I still deal with some regret. We all do. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. We do. Oh, yeah. Everybody does to an extent. So, I mean, I, get, I you know, I guess, I guess that's my answer is I saw somebody get hurt. And if I wasn't there, then I would regret. And it's, I think regret has an incredible power. A the the, huge the, thought, power. the yeah. thought of regret. And the aftermath of regret has an incredible power. You know, now that we're talking about this, I think I can sum more up in two words. The most two powerful things is we'll start with regret and then we'll get to the next one later on. <laughs> well, let's get to it now. What is it? Uh, uh, hopelessness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hit a point in October on that mission of, of feeling... I guess my tick marks were done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hit that final tick mark and I really don't know how to explain it. I don't think there's a person in this world that could explain the feeling. You know, I've, I have felt hopeless before, but I have never felt so hopeless that God's not even there. You guys weren't even around. I mean, it was a terrible feeling. Like nothing. I just wanted to lay there and pretty much die mm. in that marijuana field. How I kept walking, I don't know. I really don't to this day because I didn't want anything to do with the war or, you know, even life at that point. Yeah. Just get me out of the situation pretty much. Yeah. And I think that's the, um, that's the, the crazy thing about the extremity of it. Is you get pushed to that point where you do you get you get slapped with hopelessness, you know? And it was just such a bet. There were there had been so much stuff building up to that point and mm -hmm. that day it was a bad mission. Y'all have talked about it before on other podcasts, but uh it was like between I couldn't go back to the trucks. I was too far into the mission. Yeah. I had to keep going. Yeah. And when I was in it, you know, I had that stupid sniper rifle. In the middle of a freaking marijuana field, and they just lit us up. Mm. And I was just like, "This, this is it. I'm. There's nothing more I mm. can do." And I think that one of the things about um, our story, as a platoon and individuals in the platoon, is that you you reach that point, and for some people, they can't they can't get past that hopelessness they can't get past that point mm -hmm. and rebound from it and some can you know but like something has to happen to where you you hit that limit and then you exceed it to the point where you don't even care anymore yeah i think curtis would probably say he felt the same way that same day in that same marijuana yeah. field i'm exactly sure exactly the same in the ex yeah a hundred percent it was a but a, a feeling that i've never felt before so. yeah and it was so intense that mm -hmm. when that helicopter landed to get Sergeant Nicoa, I had thoughts of just like running up there and just, you know, jumping, yeah, jumping on, on it, it. <laughs> taking a ride to Cal. <laughs> get me out of here, please. But, you know, I'm obviously not going to do that. Yeah. I've still got to continue. Most people can come back from that hopelessness moment, but not when you keep going into the heart of Najat and then. The reason why I hate that mission is because Sergeant Dennison came to me and asked if I would clear. And I told him no. As we all know, Sergeant Dennison ended up losing both of his legs on that mission right at the very end. So I hold that over me too. But uh, yeah, once once we were getting close to the shot inside that marijuana field and that feeling of, I guess, nothingness just a black hole. I had to find a way to keep walking. And then Dennison got his legs blown off. And then uh, Todd got his legs blown off. And it was just kind of like a, what is happening? 
Mm. Is this really happening? Like, is all this happening at this moment? Like, are we going to get out of here? We're not. Yeah. I'm a thousand percent sure we're not. I mean, gonna the, get out there of was here. definitely a moment there where I was like, <laughs> we're not going to get out of here. We're not getting out like, of the We're a hundred feet. In the we're like a hundred feet from that checkpoint. And just like, I could see the flag flying. I could see it. Yeah. It's so close. But yeah, we're just getting jacked and jacked and jacked. And it's been that way for the past two days. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I want to take a moment to casualty. I want to take a moment to empathize and sympathize with you because a lot of the things that you're talking about, I, I, I've also struggled with. It was bad, um, man, that hopelessness feeling. I've it never was. felt it, and I hope that somebody else has, but it was a bad one, man. It was a bad feeling. It was. And I actually remember telling Tom, you know, after we got out of the weed field, we're like leaning up against that building, and then there's the wall there. I remember telling him, I was like, just, just leave me here. Just leave me. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I can't go any further. I don't know what he said, but he basically called me stupid. And I, I seriously wouldn't have cared if they just left me and I just sat there and rotted in Afghanistan for the rest of my life. That's like, exactly how I felt. I was like, you can go ahead and just leave me. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm good here. And he, I can't remember what he said. He basically called me an idiot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if they come for me, I'll shoot them. But I'm yeah. sitting here yeah. and I'm gone. I, I wasn't going to stay there. I wasn't going to watch like the entire American element walk off. You're like, oh, I'm going to stay here. <sighs> But it's, it's like, your in my, fault. It's y'all's fault for walking off because we could have just stayed there. We could have camped, bro. I would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they would have camped to real well. Uh, but even, even to your point about Sergeant Dennison, and I'm, I, I've had this conversation. Well, you and I have had it several times. Yeah, because he he also asked me to clear. Yeah, I know. And I also and I also told him no. It don't make um, me feel any better. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah. But what he said to me later did and i know he's told you the same thing and i'm gonna yeah, make he you hear it again he told me the same is, thing. is that when it got to a certain point on that mission when he realized how dangerous it was he wasn't going to let anybody else clear and yeah. i did see he did tell people no other people did try to take it from him towards the end um so i know you've heard it and you don't believe it but no i believe it i just it makes um, me feel bad because you know i was a clear I had been clearing the entire time, pretty much, and it's just. And you were not clearing on that mission because every everyone had said you had done your time. So the the moral there, and I know there's nothing I can say to make you to alleviate that guilt. Dude, it's I'm fine. Yeah. I I just, you know, that mission was. It was it, man. It was it. That was yeah. the breaking point for a lot of people. It broke me. I don't know me. how. I seriously don't know how I kept walking. Survival, man. Adrenaline. And like, you, you, I know you you've pick shared it, you the picture. It. I know yeah. you've shared the picture of us at the LP checkpoint. And I look so defeated. Mm. Yeah. Like, dude, I lost the spark in my eye that day. That man. that picture is war. That that I, that, lo- yeah. I lost I lost yeah. the flame of my eye that day. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I'll never got it back, but the the only thing that kind of detracts from that picture is Ibrahimov in the bottom corner of it. God, <laughs> like, and, dude, like, and I asked him, I was like, I was like doing? I was like, what is wrong with you? Like, are you not just like absolutely destroyed from it? And he's like, I don't know. I'm just happy to be alive, to be honest. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, that makes sense. Fair but, but yeah, that, that picture is a good, I feel like that's one of those pictures yeah, that says a lot, you know. Oh, it's, it's a powerful and picture. He, and to add on to that, see, we didn't add on to a few more tick marks. Let me add on the other two. <laughs> the other two was uh, Sergeant Nintz wasn't there. Mm-hmm. And I'm not Sergeant. taking away from anybody else. No, no. I'm not, but Sergeant Nintz was also my squad leader, and he was my rock the entire time, too. Sergeant Ott wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I mean... We're missing like everybody pretty much. Yeah. By the end of that mission, who did we have? Sergeant Lloyd was the senior ranking person on the ground. Yeah. And as far as NCOs go. Yes. Brand new E5. Yeah. Brand yeah. new. Everything else was literally specialists and privates. Wait In the course of two days, you saw both squad leader. Well, um, one squad leader taken off the battlefield. Yeah. Uh, Another squad leader taken off the battlefield. Yeah. Um, four or five Joes taken off the battlefield. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and then at the end, uh, the platoon sergeant loses his legs. The medic loses his leg. You know, you talk about attrition to the to the complete degree. We had to be rescued. 
you know? Yeah, we did. You had to be rescued by we the scout We didn't have platoon. anything else to continue. With. We couldn't I mean, clear. We had no mine clearing equipment. We were like, oh. If it was up to me, I would have ran towards the thing. <laughs> guess what? You just can't do that in yeah. Afghanistan. You got to have a clearing device. I right. didn't care at that point. Yeah. yeah I would have took off sprinting. With it. I would have took off sprinting. Yeah. I think had we known earlier on that if we just followed the creek down, we would have been there. I think we would have just done that. I don't yeah. think... I don't think anybody had the presence of mind. Well, also the the Dell phones had been blown up. Nobody had a map anymore. Like, man, I forgot about the Dell phones. Everybody, like, we, dude, I can see the flag flying. I would have taken yeah. off sprint. <laughs> so, I mean, we, yeah, I mean, it was that was bad. Um, as as about as bad as it gets, without people actually dying, and it's a miracle that. that oh, I, I, t- I told I told Coffee that I was like, how, how. Was it not worse? Yeah. And I mean casualty wise and oh, death yeah. wise. Yeah. Cause it's lucky, man. Should have been. Yeah. A thousand percent. Like, Every, everybody has those close calls. Like take those numbers and double them probably. Yeah. And there were there were a few a few things that kind of contributed to that too. Like the uh Ramadan. Ramadan kind of things were really getting really bad. Then Ramadan happened and we kinda had to play this game with the ANA, like Pucker when we'll factor. go out, where we'll go out. And they wouldn't go out in a lot of places. They wouldn't go very far. So, whereas we were losing basically a guy a week, suddenly we're like, okay, we can only go on certain yeah. missions to certain towns now. Um, it didn't mean that we did any less work because low crawl day happened during Ramadan. Um, but like Pucker we, Facker, it, Pucker Facker ha- happened during Ramadan too. Did it? Yeah, yeah, that was for y'all. Right? Because the Af- I, I swear to God, during the middle, of the, like when the sun started going down, they just left the compound. <laughs> to go get like food and stuff and i was like these guys are freaking nuts dude <laughs> so as we kind of come to a natural conclusion here mm. um and i mean we could we could talk to you all day uh yeah cool. <laughs> uh we don't want to want to push through too much but at the end of these episodes we we kind of give you the chance to say whatever you want to whoever you want like it's like open floor, whatever Dustin Smothers wants to say. So we want to give you that opportunity. In case we didn't t- talk about something that you wanted to talk about, there's just something you really want to get out there. No, I do. I mean, there's like a thousand things out there. But no, I mean, <laughs> really, I mean, I'm just here to talk, man. I enjoyed being here and talking about that. I was nervous at first, but no. <laughs> there's a – we're good. I can tell Coffee's got to pee because he's jiggling his leg. <laughs> he's, al- he's always got to pee. <laughs> So we can cut this, so... (laughs)